Is this thing on? Well, a warm virtual welcome to Professor Stocko and any uh, associated TAs who are watching this video. This is our ELEC 391 project presentation uh, for Nikita Drozdovs, Luke Badalka, and Zachary Chow. First on the agenda, the simulation. Here you see the full SimX model of our system. As you can see, it is a 3.5 degree Freedom Scara robot with a wrist and gripper mechanism, uh, and it's capable of grabbing all of the marshmallows as specified by the control system. There is a tightly controlled exponential interpolation of points between the uh, garbage and the marshmallow points, so it slows down coming in with 0% overshoot uh, during the grasping motion and travels the 10 centimeters back from the conveyor to the garbage release point. The initial position of the robot uh, and its general operating position and location to the conveyor was chosen to maximize the control over the joints and minimize the inertia by avoiding a fully extended arm uh, at any point. And up next, the mechanical. Here we have the mechanical design of the robot arm. We can see from right to left there is the base, shoulder, bicep, elbow, forearm, wrist, and gripper. Notable features include the, the pulley drive mechanism for the uh, driving of the elbow joint. The upper drive assembly is attached to a pulley which drives a belt which drives a pulley at the elbow and uh, there is a tensioner for the belt which is included in the bicep and it is adjustable uh, in two dimensions in order to get an appropriate tension on the belt. The second notable feature is the inclusion of bearings in a few load bearing locations, uh, notably the elbow joints above and below, um, the shoulder joint, and the finger. They are outlined in detail in the reports. The purpose of them is to restrict the motion to the desired axes. Overall, the design is very flexible to uh, extending or changing. The, for example, the lengths can be easily changed by cutting different lengths of aluminum extrusion and mounting pieces are easily swapped out uh, and modified as most of them are small components uh, and all of them are designed to be 3D printed and maneuvered and changed as necessary uh, should, the, should the design parameters change or should there be issues in the current design found during the building of the hardware. Controls. As you can see, here is our full controls model, and I'm just going to talk a little bit more in depth about the path generation. So for path generation, we actually generate a full path right away, and then output each coordinate at a at our sample time. And the way we generate the path is we define a table origin point, which is a x and y coordinate in SimX, and then we generate the position of each point that we care about. And the cool thing about this is if we actually modify our table origin in SimX, all we need to do is just change these coordinates and everything will be recalculated, so it's really easy to uh, change our project if we need it to be. And the way we generate points is whenever we go to the first, second, or third marshmallow, we use a, a, an exponential interpolation that's actually limited. So we define an x value and we divide by that x value and then increment that x value until we reach a certain limit. So we actually keep moving and don't just keep decreasing and decreasing in our spacing of the points. And when we move from garbage points, we want to be efficient, so we just divide it by the same increment point of length of t. So if we just modify our variable t into a bigger or smaller number, we can uh, manage the speed of the arm. And last, but certainly not least, electrical. Okay, so this is the completed PCB. The supply voltage comes from these two connectors here, and is carried through this big core and comes through this path here and connects to these top two MOSFETs. Um, in order to get the required current to them uh, at their maximum, um, the path here is stitched towards the bottom layer, which has a much more wide and interrupted pads here on the inner layers are both um, ground planes that are stitched together on the edges here. Finally, this linear regulator here is connected to the bottom layer and across the bottom edge of the board 
is a 5 volt board that powers the Arduino here encoders on either side of the board. And so concludes our time together. Thank you for listening and for your consideration, and thank you for a wonderful class.